and welcome to the Planning Hub. And today we are joined by White Rose approved Lisa Ellis of Lisa Ellis Hair and Makeup. She's not only she a hairstylist, but she's also a makeup artist extraordinaire as well. But today we're going to be focusing on hair. And we're going to be chatting about what things you should consider as a bride to be in terms of getting your hair styled right for the day. So what are your thoughts on that, Lisa? So there's a lot of stuff to consider, but I would say, um, firstly, obviously start planning straight away to get in contact with as many hairstylists as possible. Obviously get a feel, look at their websites, and um, once you've got a wedding date set in mind, then I think it starts to fall into place. It does quite nicely, actually. Yeah. And I think a lot of it is about what sort of wedding they're having. Because yeah. if they're going to something very traditional, like a beautiful traditional hotel, then I suppose something more sleek or whatever is appropriate, whereas a marquee would be quite different, vintage, yeah. classic, that sort of thing. It can be very daunting, but I think once you've got your wedding venue and once you've got your dress, um, everything kind of already starts to do the illumination process, I think it starts to fall into place naturally. Obviously Pinterest is, um, you can keep looking and oh, looking, looking and looking and looking. Um, <laughs> it is a great um, tool to use and um, I always advise to, to pick styles necessarily that you wouldn't necessarily choose because sometimes yeah. it could be something that actually you may end up liking. Also, um, the time of the year can dictate oh, yeah. which um, hairstyle may be best suited and, um, and yourself really as to what you're naturally used to, you're naturally used to your hair down for going out or that you feel more comfortable with it up. So, yeah, it's making sure that you feel comfortable yeah. in yourself on the day because it's quite a big thing, isn't it, if you then feel a bit self-conscious. Because obviously yeah. you feel a little bit heightened in terms of the day because, you know, you're so beautifully glamorous and finished, but if you feel a bit uncomfortable, you'll feel uncomfortable all day. Yeah. So, and I suppose a lot of it is about, like, the condition of your hair. So what would you recommend in terms of cutting or colouring, also that time scale? So I'd always advise to um, stick to a stylist that you're comfortable mm. with going to already. Try not to... Um, change anything in terms of um, completely out of the norm. Um, stick to the natural hairstylist, she can best advise you on, um, I would suggest there's probably two weeks before the wedding um, to make sure that you've had a nice trim, not to go to anything radical in terms of a fringe or loads of length <laughs> Yeah. Because it can obviously then change. And then they might the not like it. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? You can't glue it back on. <laughs> doing a little trim it may be you know that little bit more could make a difference so to allow plenty of time minimum yeah two weeks before and the colour the same time scale minimum two weeks before the wedding day to let the colour settle and the cut settle yeah and um, if you are wanting to change the colour then there's probably a good couple of months before have um yeah, change of colour to make sure that you like it and you've got time in your side. Yeah, it's got time to settle down, so also it's always yeah. more vibrant to start with and you might prefer it that extra week later. later. Okay. And then in terms of condition, um, I would say the prepping of the hair is just as important as sort of, you know, if you're just doing your sort of facials and stuff, so make sure that you do treatments, but ideally the night before keep a very basic routine with washing your hair because heavy conditioner or just yeah, yeah. Like, not the best. Write it down and yeah. make it difficult the next morning to style and print up because it'd be too heavy and way too maybe too silky. So yeah. Um, no leave in conditioners and um, just a standard shampoo and um, an ordinary conditioner. So definitely not washing and, and conditioning on the day of the wedding. Depending on um some vibes I do it far as they can, and um, if they've got really fine hair that they just know by the end of the day they're prone to being greasy, yeah. and they don't like, and they're just that morning person, they wake up, shower, wash their hair every day, so I tend to have that flexibility, but it's definitely got to be on the individual vibe, yeah. I wouldn't advise that for everybody, everybody. down to the person, um, so yeah, I would say usually, normally, the bride and the bridal party wash their hair the day before or the night before. The night before is nice because a lot be happens during the day before. Yeah, and it's one less thing to do yeah. on the day itself as well, so you don't have to worry about it. So it's quick shower, shower cap, and you're ready to go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so I suppose that's the main thing. So think, is there anything else to add to that really in the condition? I suppose um, you would obviously spend lots of time in making sure that everything stayed in and lasted and so on and any additional like tiaras and flower crowns you would organise. Yeah, the, um, the flower crowns and um, flowers, natural flowers that look beautiful in the hair. Mm. Again, this is most probably more where you need to contact the florist to get the wires put in. Um, make sure that communication is there with them as much as a hairstylist so we can write together. And um, the tiaras, there's so much choice, um, it's best to just try and avoid buying um, too much online because it can be a bit of a disappointment when it arrives and it's not quite what the picture looked like. So always go with the trusty recommendation and go into an actual shop and try them on. And um, even better if you can try it on with the dress. I know, and a lot of so, the bridal boutiques will already know because they're brilliant, yeah. and they'll already know and they'll think that would look perfect with that dress. And, yeah. and I suppose really it's, it's trusting in that expertise to know that it will work Definitely. and look lovely. And it's a position as well because nowadays a lot of people have a position underneath the styles, yeah. whether yeah. it's on top here, so um, with a veil, and, and so it can be um, nice to try that option, especially if you're having quite extravagant updo. Yeah. And uh, if the fair is positioned here you kind of lose that yeah. detail. So definitely it's um yeah, it's kind of not to rule it out but to have an open mind and and make sure you try everything. Yeah. And then obviously then go back to season the theme of any <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But quite often again we come back to that expertise and we'll just finish on this that a lot of the time actually you end up going with something that you would never have ever considered. Yeah. So it's worth being open-minded yeah. so, and let, let the suppliers do their thing because they'll immediately know what will work for you. And it can definitely be the case to have an open mind on the wedding day because if, if you've gone for a style that you're adamant um, and the day is just a washout, hopefully, fingers crossed it won't be. <laughs> but if it's the case that it's yeah, a windy, rainy, wet and you wanted this Hollywood glamorous curls, maybe to have an open mind yeah. of having it up and and to to have that back up when you have your trial, so you're yeah. not disappointed. And so just again, it comes back to that trusting yeah. scenario, doesn't it? <laughs> Trust your suppliers; <laughs> they know what they're doing. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for that great advice, Lisa. And Lisa's website um, is underneath this video, so do click here. And thank you for joining us at the planning hub.